it is the fifth Honest Night that I'm hosting um, with Sky, Vodka, and the Ideas Cartel people. Um, I, I like to admit that I do very little in organizing this. Um, so it's definitely accredited <coughs> to Sky and I Ideas Cartel. So thank them for that. Again, for your support, that's really cool. Um, I always like to start the event by telling you why we're sitting here. Um, so I built my first business when I was 16 and no one told me how hard it was gonna be. And then I failed for 10 years and no one told me how hard that was gonna be. And I didn't tell anyone. And um, this event is about being honest. It's about talking openly about how difficult building things can be. Um, it can be fun, it can be rewarding, but a lot of the time it can be hard. And most of the time what you don't see is the, the hard parts. So we call on interesting, experienced people from all over the world um, in very different backgrounds and industries to tell us about their story and the things that they find difficult. Um, and today we have Yannick, uh, also known as Petit Noir. Um, and to kick things off, I never introduce my guests. I always ask them to introduce themselves. So tell us about yourself. Yeah, my name is Yannick. Uh, I'm a musician. Uh, I was born in Brussels to Congolese parents. My, then in 1993, well, I was only born there because my parents were in exile. So my dad was in the government at the time in the 90s, I guess. And when the, once the regime sort of like collapsed, uh, they tried to, you know, hit the road and <laughs> go to like Europe and stuff. But cool. Uh, I guess, you know, the relationships and stuff, so it didn't really work out that well, so they were like, okay, we have to get out of here, so they went to Ivory Coast. Then once we stopped at Ivory Coast, we came to Cape Town. Okay, so let's dive right in. Um, tell me what the most difficult thing about <coughs> being a musician is for you. Um, I would say the most difficult thing about being a musician is the discipline. Okay. Number one. Uh, the mental, you know, your mental health. Which uh, we'll get to, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, discipline, mental health, you know, I guess all, because it's obviously, you know, 90% of it is like risk, you know, so, you know, you don't know which side it's going to fall, like your music's going to fall on or your art's going to fall on, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would say, yeah. Cool. The, the, yeah. Okay. Um, so in the theme of the evening, we're going to stick with being honest. So in your experience, are artists and musicians honest about how much they struggle and the difficulties? Or is there like a lot of ego and bravado? Because in the entrepreneurial space, it's all bravado, it's all show. There's not a lot of honesty that comes through. Yeah, definitely. Because um, I, I guess, you know, the 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 system says that or like the music industry says that you have to be a certain way to be an artist or to be a a pop star or whatever mm. you know so people are going after like the i guess a lot of people sort of go after like the pop star sort of look you know which is i guess today it's looking like something that you're ne not necessarily that you're not you know what I'm mm. so um you know, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, and I think, you know, that sort of translates into, you know, just having a relationship with, let's say, with you, you, mm -hmm. you know, like, just like, you know, um, communicating with each other. So it's like, yeah, it's not, it's not an easy thing also, you know, because obviously it's you, it, your life is like potentially seen by a lot of people. So, you know, it could be embarrassing, you know, but yeah, you know, that's... Okay. Yeah. Cool, it makes okay. sense. Yeah. Um, tell me something that you have recently overcome. That I've overcome? Um, <clears throat> I would say... Wow, I don't know. Just so everyone knows, he did get the questions beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not springing these on him. <laughs> I'm not that type of an interviewer, okay? I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <coughs> if you got nothing, we got lots to get through, so. No, no. Um, so, <coughs> I mean, the something that I've overcome, I would say, right now, would be, um, 
I don't know, you know. Okay. I don't know. That's fine. Let's move on. We've got enough. Um, what keeps you up at night? What keeps me out at, up at night? Uh, just what I do. Love, the love for, you know, for art and um, just like, and also how I can impact, you know, my environment or my, you know, my people or so okay. you know where I'm from. Cool. Um, you and I had a long conversation yesterday, um, and we got quite deep into the, the reads about why you do what you do. Um, so how do you answer that question? I mean, is it money? Is it fame? Everyone who sees pop stars thinks, yes, they're rich and famous. That's all they want. But it's not really what came out with you. So like, why do you do what you do? What I do, why I do what I do is because I just love making music. I, I, that's a, like hectic thing for people to understand nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I just genuinely love making music and like, love making art, you know. I don't, like, okay, cool, you know, obviously there's that like, you know, that, that idea of being rich and famous, you know what I'm trying to say? And being like, um, and being whatever, but I just genuinely love making music and love working with other people. And I think, <coughs> you know, that's what that's what really matters with me right now, you know. And my work will get me to where I need to be. It opened so many doors for me already. So I'm just like, I'm just patient, you know. I'm just doing what I love doing, you know. Off the back of that, I mean, we discussed privilege a little bit, and I mean, I, th I think the statement you make is great, but from a privileged position, that your music affords you the ability to make more music. So if you weren't able to afford it, would you still make music? Like if you're broke on your ass somewhere, you'd still be making music? Um, and then talk about the privilege. Definitely. I mean, there are people that had started off with way less than I did and are way more successful than I am. You know what I'm trying to say? So I don't think it's really, I didn't choose my life. Like I didn't, you know, I was, didn't tell God, like, can you give me this family and stuff like that. I just was born into it. You know what I'm trying to say? So I'm not, <coughs> Like, I can't really say what another person's experience is like or how their career is. So, um, what all I can do right now is just, you know, focus on, on you know, my gift and, you know, release it to the world and the positive message. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, let's <laughs> get into failure. I, mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite topics. I don't think we talk about it enough. I think it's easy to talk about success when you have it. But my immediate first question is, what's it like being an overnight success? Um, well, it's bullshit, it's bullshit right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Some people do it, some people don't. Yeah. And you know, some people uh, don't want that life, and some people don't want that yeah. life, so. I mean, you wouldn't consider yourself an overnight success, would you? No, I wouldn't consider myself an overnight success. I would just uh, say that I've had the opportunity to have a career that was, you know, that I had a career and had, like, uh, world-class peers, I guess, from the beginning of my career. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm like successful in my music, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm. It just means that I have just had the opportunity to, you know, to travel the world and, you know, I guess some people would call that success. I, that is for me, it's success, you know. Maybe if you go to my Instagram page or something, you might not think that it's success, or if you go to my Twitter or something. But, you know, um, I've had the opportunity to travel the world, uh, make music with amazing people. But you make it sound so easy. Like, you're being very ethereal about it, but you just, <laughs> you're disregarding all your hard work. Okay, can I be honest? The thing is, for me, it's just... Preferably, yeah. It just... <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is about, man. Be honest. Yeah. No, okay, the thing is, for me, it came... It just... Like, it, I, had my, I had this vision that I would be making music with, you know, the world's super greatest, and then yeah. I just, it just came, and like, you know, I've never, like, okay, my, I would say my career was like the inverse. Okay. Whereas I started off, like, on a huge platform, you know what I'm trying to say, I've got 
like a big advance in 20, like when I was like 21, 22, I got a lot of money out, flown to the UK, whatever. Traveled the world, toured a lot, you know, did things that a lot of people at the time, especially from, I would say the continent, or maybe from my, like my area or whatever, weren't doing at the time, right? So from the beginning of my career, especially my manager at the time made me feel like, you know, he was like really like, okay, cool, you know, we're gonna do this and you're a star. So from the beginning of like my career, he already put that thing in my mind. Mm. And it's like, he was not, not necessarily you're a star, but we're gonna take you there, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So for him, for, and he was also really like accommodating and like, he like let me study his house, he made sure everything was okay, he picked me up from the airport every time, got cars for me, made sure studio was okay, Kay. whatever I wanted, yeah. he would organize, he would organize, you know, and I think maybe for me that was, I was a little bit spoiled, okay. let's say, right, so, um, yeah, I was, in the beginning of my career, I was really spoiled. You know, sometimes when you're spoiled, I don't want to say that you don't really appreciate what you have, but for me, it just felt normal. It just felt like this is just how life is meant to be. You know yes. what I'm trying to say? We discussed normalizing success and the problems of struggling to become successful and normalizing that success are different struggles, yeah. but struggles nonetheless, right? Um, and we were talking about when I sold my first company in my socks and underwear, signed it and carried on watching TV. Didn't celebrate, didn't do anything, and I regret it. Um, and I, I think you were saying something similar, that you hit these milestones and you just let them go by and then you hit for the next one. So if you're saying that you've had relative comfort and success since 21, where does that leave you now? Well, I mean, I want to say success, I get, like, I don't know. Not in the worst way, in the like, best way. Like, success makes me feel like I should be, like, driving a Ferrari. You know what I'm trying to say? Or, like, but, but I guess... I, but I, you're I, happy I, doing with what you I do, get right? what you, I get what you're yeah. saying. Like, I'm yeah. happy doing what I do, yeah. right? And, um, yeah, I'm happy doing what I do, but, yeah, you know. Okay. That's just, I'm happy doing what I do, man. You that's know, good enough. Just going through my journey. Um, so we, I, I've said for a while that I find it really hard building things in South Africa and finding scale. And you said something to me that struck me um, as quite a statement that I want you to unpack. You said that Cape Town is not built for the success of black people. Yeah, it's not. Uh, I'd like you to unpack that. Okay, so basically Cape Town isn't built for the success of black people. It, it, I don't know how it was historically or what systems they put in place to, I mean, I need to research that, mm. but for someone that's been living here since 1993 with like this sort of like bird eye view of Cape Town, it doesn't, yeah, it's not made for people like me. So did you feel you had to leave to find yeah, your, your feet? Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. I had to leave, I had to, you know, do what I do somewhere else and sort of come in like that, you know what I'm trying to say? Okay, the way that I sort of strategized the whole situation was, listen, I'm, I'm in Cape Town, right? Cape Town, South Africa itself gets, they basically, the world's like main satellites are like, I would say Europe or like London, right? And then there's like LA. I guess now in this day and age, you know, we can do it from anywhere. There's mm -hmm. like, like social media. It's, but I guess back then it was like, okay, cool. You know, there's London, there's like LA, there's, a few other little hubs, mm -hmm. I would say. So I was like, okay, cool, let me just, you know, send my music everywhere and see what happens. Because I know that once, my, if, my, if I get my music, like, sort of put out from up there, you know, it'll have a more, a bigger sort of appeal. Mm. Or appeal or like, just like, it'll be pushed harder, in yeah. more places, yeah. harder, you know? And so yeah so that's what the whole thing was it wasn't necessarily me wanting to leave because i was like it was just that i just strategized it that way and mm. i was like okay cool this is actually because i know that from maybe from like places in africa stuff like that a lot of the music doesn't actually get like out of the, the country mm. you know what i'm trying to say so or like you know or a lot of the times african artists play in like other countries it's always like an african festival or like you know, especially curated for 
that, those people. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? So mm. I was like, screw that, I'm not going to do that. Like, don't put me like, I don't want to do that. Put me with like, the no, like just... Everyone else. Everyone yeah. else, you know what I'm trying to say? So yeah, it's not, it's not the easiest thing, I would say, doing that. But internally, I feel like I'm accomplishing like, you know, something and I'm breaking down like, yeah. you know. So I mean, I'm really interested in this because I'm sure that there are a lot of people who want to know specifically how, like you sent your music to how many people? I'll give you the oh. example. My previous, previous company, I pitched to 30 investors in the space of six months and they all said no. So like, what was your travel to get to, you said you sent your music out. How many, how often, like how did you push that to get into the everyone uh, festivals? Uh, in terms of the music, I pushed it to, okay, so basically what happened was, I was in Cape Town making music, and uh, I was uh, at home, and I was sending my music like via the internet, and the stuff wasn't, like, I was recording on like my Apple Mac uh, uh, microphone, microphone yeah. you know, at the time. So I was like, like I'm just making this little beat, I sound terrible. So I was sending my stuff to like a lot of people. So I was sending stuff to like just everyone. I was like, someone's gonna like this, you know. Someone. Like 10, 20, 30, 50? Uh, Anyone you could find? <laughs> Literally. Do you know what? Well, did not happen? Someone sent me like uh, some random email. Yeah. But they forgot to BCC like the list. Oh, nice. So I did it. So I did it. So I just copied the whole list <laughs> and <laughs> I just like. Yeah, and it was like a music nice. thing. So when yeah. I, did, I just copied the whole list. I started sending that, like everything I had. I started like every time I made music, I started sending, and I started getting replies and like people from like the, all over the world started sending me like messages and being like, yeah, we want to feature music on this blog. Want to do this? Want to do that? Amazing. So I was like, okay, that's kind of crazy. But anyway, so I was like, okay, cool. Wasted a few months. Then people started like messaging me from like. Uh, from like different like labels at the time. Uh, there was this guy from like uh, Warner that was like, yeah, you have to do this and you have to do that. Like he was really like trying to like, um, like look after my career, I guess. Okay. Uh, and he was like, yeah, like, and at the time he was like, yeah, I need to meet this girl. Uh, her name is SZA at the time. And it was like in 2012, 2011. And we started like making music. And then on the other side, there was this guy from the UK at the same time that was like, do you want to come to the UK? I'll pay for you. All from this email list? This is all, this is all from the from that email, same list. email list. Yeah, this that's is all crazy. from the email list. I started getting these emails and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, that's crazy. So I ended up choosing like the UK guy, right? Okay. So I was like, because he was like, ah, I know, I should have chosen. <laughs> 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 so I'm joking. <laughs> the part no, I'm joking. I can think no. at the time, obviously, like the, uh, at the time, the, 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 the American guy was like, okay, cool. He was linking me up with some good people, but he was like, I wasn't seeing like, there was nothing concrete, you know? Okay. This, it was more like, okay, cool, try this track. And then I was like, okay, you know, let's chill a little bit. So the UK guy was like, okay, cool. Here's a ticket, come to the UK. He has a whole plan set up for me. And I went, played first show. He organized the first show. Got a lot of people there, industry people, because he had been in the music industry for quite a while. Mm. So he got like a lot of like press people to come to the show. Did the show, killed the show. Then the <laughs> next day, uh, what? That first show was at uh, the Vice. It was just like the Vice magazine, yeah. and, like bar or something. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. So so after the show, killed that show. Went to another. Then he was like. Um, uh, then we got like then Boiler Room came in. Yeah, this was like in 2013 or something. Then yeah. Boiler Room was like, yeah, come to the show. So we went, we did a show, we killed that one too. Then there was a which is an interesting point to, to 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 stop on, right? If you get the opportunity, you better fucking kill it. Yeah, exactly, like, definitely. You can't screw around. So you got one also, shot. I mean, I was I had I had the energy. I'm just yeah. saying, I was like hot. Like I mean, you're there in Vice, and the Vice editor sees a crap performance, you are screwed. Like that's it. Well, uh, they'll smash you. I don't know. Okay. But <laughs> well, you killed it, so it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So okay. So after the boiler room. <laughs> so after that boiler room, then I started getting like emails from different labels in the UK, and there was this label called Domino that was like, 
well, first there were like all these other like um, major labels that came and they were like, yeah, we want you to work with like all these people. And I was like, I don't really work with people like, that produce like that. You know, mm. they were trying to link me up with like these EDM type of guys. And I was like, I'm not really into that vibe. So I never got a call back from those guys. So then the next sort of uh, couple of days later, this label was like, uh, uh, here's, uh, they was like, please come in the store, please come into the, the office and um, they put a contract and they were like, here's, however much. <laughs> Enough, yeah. Enough, but yeah. it was quite a lot at the time. You know, yeah. I was like, damn, like, this is crazy. You know, and I was really like, the start of like, that life. You know what I'm trying to say? That you see mm. like in the movies, mm. like, kid from like, Africa. And made Gets it. an email from a you guy. Know, and then, it's like, like he's the out reverse there. Nigerian scam thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, exactly. it's a guy it's in the like UK who's scamming <laughs> you to go, it's crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> So basically, I mean, the, the only thing is like, that wasn't a scam. That's yeah. A, you know, yeah. <laughs> Look at you now, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. okay, no. That's crazy, but, man. No, nah, so he was like, okay, cool. So I played, so I, I did the, the Domino, uh, so then this label called Domino at the time that was, that I really loved, like, um, even before that. I had sent my music to them before, but they didn't even apply. But anyway, so at this point, they were like, they were like, come in the office and come in and, you know, they gave me a contract, popped the champagne, did the whole thing, mm -hmm. signed the deal, went on my first tour, like a week after that, bought my guitar and stuff like that, on the road, stuff like that. Everything was amazing. It was next level for the first, like, let's say, three years. Did like- You toured for three years? Yeah, I toured for three years. Did like Africa, no, not even Africa, Europe, America, some parts of Asia, stuff like that. I, just, I want to pause you for a second. And I, I want you guys to think about the last time you did something for three years straight. <laughs> like we make, we think about that. Like I, I've run businesses shorter than three years uh. and you just toured for three years. Yeah, well, it's, I, it's, it's, sound, it's better than, it sounds, uh, the first three years was amazing, sure. right? It was next level, but you know, I think, I was obviously like, it was, yeah, for like, it was the first three years. It was amazing. And then? I released, uh, it was coming. Okay. <laughs> so I released, yeah. uh, <laughs> I released, uh, I released one, like, EP. It put me out there. Sort of, uh, the second project, it was like, <laughs> Okay. You did not kill it. it didn't, yeah, it didn't do that well, they yeah. say. <laughs> okay. But it, like, it did well in a sense that it was really, the whole thing was really forward thinking and like something that I guess had never really been done before, mm -hmm. you know? So at that, you know, so I guess maybe the build up was like crazy and then once the album came out, it wasn't as crazy, but it was still crazy for like a while. But yeah. then, it, <laughs> you know, it's and sort so of. So, what does that do yeah. to you? Before I get there. Yeah. So I. So, but anyway. So, but all this time, the thing is, the music industry is like type of place where people like as much as they have egos, they also like to big people up at mm. the same time. You know what I'm trying mm. to say. So it's like, okay, cool. Um, we got the. Uh, they're like, uh, no one was, the label wasn't communicating with me. The, my manager wasn't communicating with me. My, uh, uh, or like telling me like, oh, Yannick, you need to, you know, do this. Or like, you need to do that. Or like, you need to, you know, he wasn't. We, Stop mentoring me through He wasn't yeah. really mentoring me because yeah. we were more like, the, more or less the same age. Mm. And he might, maybe in his career, maybe didn't accomplish what I accomplished in like that time, you know what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say? So mm -hmm. it was a very like friend thing, yep. which was not, which isn't ideal in this type of yep. situation, especially when it's like you're trying to run like a thing, you know? So, and also, you know, with that whole like sex drugs and rock and roll type of lifestyle that everyone wants to sort of, you know, 
thinks is the yeah. way to <laughs> be an artist yeah. and you know and it's just a lot of things that you know but anyway so so a lot of it has to do with like I would say discipline you know a lot of it has to do with uh, just sort of carrying on but anyway and also playing the game to a certain extent mm. that you know that that's why I think the, the day like these record labels they're all just like banks and like you money know, mm. so you have to strategically sort of play the game but anyway so I remember like in 2016 2017 I think we just played I just played in like Madeira which is like off an island of Portugal and the whole week you know, we're eating like crazy shrimp like and seafood and just having like a crazy in this crazy hotel that yeah. was built by this amazing Brazilian architect but anyway and we spent like seven days there right so yeah. uh, uh, played the show on the last day killed it even got a standing ovation for that show okay. got back to London and uh, we're walking past Topshop right and my music's playing in Topshop I was like wow this is crazy no ways. I get back to the house <laughs> my manager's like Yannick we need to you know we need to meet up and I'm like on this crazy high so then we get to the, the, the meeting place, and he's like, I have some news. Domino just canceled the contract. They didn't take the option. I was like, that's crazy. No way. You know, for me there, I was like, that's. I just, but I just heard my song in top. <laughs> you know, I just what? heard my. <laughs> what I are you just, talking about? You know, and that's, they were like, yeah, Domino like uh, canceled the contract. And I was like, that's crazy, because I, Probably, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm doing pretty well right yeah. now. You know what I'm trying to say? So, but anyway, so thing was, the music industry went through like a crazy whatever, and they had to like cut a lot of contracts or whatever. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, for like, you know, you sort of, I was sort of riding on that like. The high for a little bit after that mm -hmm. until I got a call saying that my visa was like about to be <laughs> so because so, obviously the reason why I could just be there like was because of the label the sponsored, you know? yeah sponsored visa yeah so they were like okay cool then they called me they were like your visas like this is like after like three four years of just like amazingness do you know what mm. I'm trying to say like so uh, I was like, okay, cool. That's quite, that's quite, that's kind of crazy. Uh, but anyway, so I was like, okay, cool. What do I do now? You know. So first thing I did was I was like, told my manager, I think we need to separate. You know, because mm. this is not really working anymore. You know what I'm trying to say? So uh, for the for the next, I guess, yeah, year and a half, I was like, really like you know, down and like, you know. But I just sort of started like, uh, and my, yeah, so I started sort of gathering all the like leftover music that I had that the label didn't own. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. And at this point, I guess I was like, this was like, I guess it was, the way I take this whole thing is you know, sometimes God or life, I guess, just shows you things in advance, you know, to this day. Mm -hmm. And if you're not really ready for a certain thing, then it'll take it away from you, you know, to this day, so that you can do better the next time it comes for you. Okay. You know, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But anyway, so I was, uh, so everything was going amazingly well. I was depressed for like a year year and a half or something and I just you know it's, it's funny how you know if you're meant to do something things will always be there for you do you know what I'm saying well, there will always be like the next step available for you to yeah. climb back to to wherever to where you're trying to go you know I want to poke in on that though because yeah. I don't think that I think there are enough people who want to be rich and famous who are good musicians who don't do it who go through the depression and have it taken away and never get it back. Mm. So, the question that I have leading into my next point, nice segue, um, I want to talk about mental health and how you cope with that. 
So it's something that we talk about in this environment a lot. Um, I don't believe enough people talk about getting help um, because we get coaches for physical health so you can be healthier and go to gym, but not enough people cope with their mental health. So you said you were depressed for a year. How do you get out of that? Um, just, uh, I guess, for me, it was more just trying to... Okay, the, the label thing, I realized that I had a lot to offer. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, like, I, I was trying to say, like, I, I believe that I have a lot to offer to the world. Okay. And to music as a whole. Okay. You know, or to the arts as a whole. So I'm not going in there with the mindset, oh, I want to be famous, I want to be this, I want to be, you know, whatever. I'm going in the, this thing loving what I actually do, mm. loving music, being in love authentic, with like sound, yeah. like, yeah, it's mm. authentic, you know what I'm trying to say? So that thing of wanting to constantly, the label, the label, okay, cool, uh, the label was putting budget behind the PR, they were putting budget behind the actual recordings, but at the end of the day, they can't, they, they will, I was adding just as much value, do you get what I'm trying to say? The only reason why I was getting that budget was because the art was, uh, well, sure. I personally believe that the art was that good. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. But yeah. what I'm asking you is, how did you day to day cope with your depression? Like oh, sorry, practically, sorry. what did you do to f deal with it, to yeah. learn those lessons, and then to get out of it? So, sorry, that leads to my next point. So, because cool. I have that love and mm. for, for like, you know, just and it's not just fueled by like making money. I was mm. able to take back all that I had learned in the last like five years and apply that now to with what I, with my new music now. I was like, okay, cool. This is what I need to do. I need to finish this. I need to finish this music. I need it to sound like this. I need to get myself a PR person. I need to make sure that it reaches the right people. Mm -hmm. I need to obviously gather all the contacts and all the like musicians and all the people that I made friends with in the past like five, seven years. I need like to, the record label nowadays is like, it's more for the name, you know? I was more in love with like the idea of being on Domino. Okay. I started to realize, you know, like the idea of being like, mm. where as, I don't know, I've, okay, it was amazing being on Domino, right? <laughs> I loved it. But, but for that time, right? Yeah, for that yeah. time, you yeah. know what I'm trying to say? So then I started to realize, I was like, I don't actually need like, you know, these, uh, these labels mm. because it's this, I've already like, listen, I can't speak for other people, right? So if you went, if someone else went through something and it didn't, maybe that just wasn't for them. Sure. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Maybe in the next five, six years, you know, God will be like, listen, now it's time for you to uh, be like, the greatest sportsman in the world, something. You know what I'm saying? Are you good at any sports? No, no I'm just neither, saying, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm no, not really, I, I I'm just using that as an example. No, I, know, I, know, I was just kidding. Um, you know, I, wanna, uh, I just want to punch in on, um, <laughs> on that depression and yeah. that period. You've been with your wife for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure that she had a big impact on helping you through this. Because you work really closely with her. Definitely. So what's that like? It's amazing. She had a huge impact on that, so definitely. She had a huge impact on that. Family had a huge impact. And having a wife that also um, is also into the arts mm. that had a major impact because it kept me into it you know mm -hmm. so I was like damn like maybe I'm you know maybe this is you know she kept motivating me like okay cool you know let's carry on doing carry on doing carry on doing it like I would have to like putting all that music together and like having her help me was like mm. I didn't even need a label. We, were, we even became our own label now. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. That's how, where like the whole sort of the noir wave idea sort of expanded. Like the noir wave was there, but we didn't really like know what we were really doing with it. We were just sort of like going with it. But now, like in that period where like I was left with like nothing, was the time when I was like, actually, you know what? Maybe Noir Wave is just a platform that uh, people sort of like, because I mean the music stuff was really like critically acclaimed and it was 
you know, people, lo writers loved writing on it. So in terms of my CV mm. as a musician, it's amazing. Mm. You know, so it's like, so, yeah. So basically making the, all the new music and stuff like that is just, you know, it wasn't, I, I just realized that, you know, I didn't really need like a label. Okay. All that, so basically all that time, what also started to get me out was starting to realize and re really starting to think about move how I want to move forward with my life, you know, mm -hmm. what I need to actually change in my own personal life to make sure that, you know, that I can actually make these opportunities benefit me, you know what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say, not like just, you know, and not just like screw myself over and like, cool. you know. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so you spoke about separating from your manager. Um, when you were 14 and learning to play guitar, you probably didn't think that you'd be firing people when you were 25 or 27. <laughs> so what's that transition like? Because musicians are actually now moguls and business people. They're not just about the art. So how have you adapted to that? Um, yeah, you know, I just, I've had to, uh, I come from a, a family where my dad is like, a, like he's like a business person, so I've sort of watched him, like you know, growing up, I watched him and how he sort of deals with certain situations, um, which isn't always the best way. <laughs> so, so <laughs> learning was, what not to do. Yeah, yeah. learning okay. what not to do. Okay. So it's like, or like how to sort of react. But he, most times it was the best way. He's an amazing yeah. man. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. So. Um, uh, so I just sort of learned, you know. Okay. And just yeah. Do you find it easy to be the business and the musician, the art, because they're vastly different skills? Um, I don't, and I don't like the association. Cause okay. I don't like the association of having to sell your art. I don't like that thing. Okay. You know, but it, you have to do it, obviously, yeah. and you have to like whatever. But in terms of the business, you know. I didn't want anything to do with the business side. So I'll just be like, okay, cool. I'm the artist and you as my manager are looking after all my business things mm. or, or, or everything else. So if I need visas and stuff like that, you are looking after it. Okay. You know? So that was basically the vibe. So. Is that still how it is? You still don't want to control any of that stuff? Well, now I, I have to. There you go. And I want to. Well, I've, what I've also learned, like, what I've also learned throughout like this whole process, it's like, it's, uh, you know, it's like I want to mm. learn, you know? Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about uh, your friends and your relationships. Um, everyone thinks and sees the glamorous Instagram life, um, which you and I have discussed and we'll talk about social media separately, but have you lost people um, along the way that you've had to cut out or move on from by being who you are and doing what you do? Um, I mean, I would, I wouldn't say I lost, I mean, I haven't lost anyone. Touch marble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, nice, yeah. don't so I don't know, like, yeah. it's, uh, okay. I haven't really, oh, still, I haven't no, really no, lost, no. no, I haven't really lost anyone. I haven't really lost anyone. I've lost manager well i guess yeah managers and things like that like uh deals you know not anyone close to me yeah you know okay um, and do you find what you do lonely i mean you're always surrounded by people you're touring a lot you're in studios but do you ever get lonely um not really I'm, I'm i'm very much a uh like a i would say a loner so okay. So I don't get lonely, but I don't mind the attention. Okay. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's you a good thing, yeah. Say, so, it's like um, so very often I, I get asked in this scenario and others, um, people tell me that their partner, their brother, their sister doesn't believe in what they're doing and doesn't support their career choice or their ability to go and build a business on the side. And I have my particular response. I'm curious. You have such a supportive partner. What would you say to someone whose partner or family or friends don't support their beliefs and their like their passion? What's your view? Um, okay. Well, the thing is, like partner and family, 
they're the same thing, but in this case, they, you know, the, in terms of the family, my, fam my parents didn't like me making music in the first, like, only once they were like, come to the UK or whatever, then they were like, okay, cool, you know, maybe this is something serious. Yeah. You know, but for the first, they were like, you have to study. I tried studying, and it just wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't coming through. You know, so yeah. I was like, so eventually, um, once I started getting those emails, that's when I dropped out of uh, college, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And then just pursued it. <laughs> oh, makes sense. <laughs> or yeah. um, so let's talk about business and music. We, we spoke a lot about you don't really like selling the arts, you like creating the arts. Um, and yesterday we chatted a bit about social media and how you're not really that fond of it. Um, but how does that work in today's world where Spotify is a viable revenue source for you and um, in between records you have to be out there and touring and promoting. Like how do you balance those two things as an authentic artist and not a, not a sellout? And the thing that I'm always, I always want to ask a musician, you said to me you wanted to build a cult following. But what happens is when you become really famous and pop culture-y, the cult people will be pissed off that you sell out. But that's when you make your real money. Exactly. Like it's a bit of a juxtaposition, right? Exactly. So how, like how do you exist in that world of business versus art? Um, business, art, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I, hate, I don't like the business side of things, and I, I, I do, I really want to keep them separate, but you just can't, mm. you know. I mean, you know, I have an amazing team and stuff like that, but what I do, you know, I can sort of bring a solution to, I mean, obviously it'll always include business, but in terms of like the music industry as a whole, right? There are, there's like, now it's like, it's not, you can't, it's, it's, I feel like the reason why people are like filled with like all this like aggression and like, um, and like, uh, uh, ego and like stuff like that, like the whole uh, like musicians are filled with that is because they don't get the opportunity to express themselves in like an artistic way. Okay. And, or like in a free way, sorry. Mm. Because a lot of the times, like, you get, like, a lot of these, like, pop stars, they constantly have to work within a formula, you know what I'm trying to say? So mm. you constantly have to feed some sort of system or aid the system to sell something, you know what I'm trying to say? So you have people, you know, let's, let's talk about, like, the, like, rap music today, right? Which is, sounds amazing, and it's amazing when you're, when you're, like, you know, doing low frequency things like hurting yourself you know when you're drinking when you're taking drugs it's mm -hmm. amazing because that music is how could i say it's designed to for that okay. you know what i'm trying to say the bass frequency which hits certain low you know parts of your body which you know feeds the lowest frequency of you as a person yep. so the lyrics, you know what I'm trying to say? So that music is designed to, it's not just people going in the studio thinking to themselves, I want to talk about killing people and I want to talk about drugs and how women are just terrible people. You know what I'm trying mm. to say? So, so I feel like the way the, where the, the where I think the, where the problem is, is in the music industry is that people don't have the freedom to express themselves freely anymore. So, because the freedom of actually making art has, and the, and the or the art world are, have become, and the music in, industry have become two very different, separate things, you know what I'm trying to say? So, mm -hmm. I feel like if the art world and the music world blended more, then we would see less mental health issues. You know, we would see less uh, how can I say, uh, f uh, people wouldn't be as aggressive, I guess, in the music and stuff like that. You okay. know? 
I feel like it'll be more positive, or even the intention, the intention would be mm. more positive. I and feel like. quite specifically, I'm curious about how, um, as a musician who doesn't particularly like business oh. or social media, how do you build a brand? And you've done a really good job of building your brand. So like, how have you done that? Practically, I'm, I'm very curious, not the, the theory or the philosophy behind it, how did you go out and build your brand? Like, were you hammering Instagram and Facebook and was it person to person? What was the practicality of it? Um, the practic I guess for me it was more press. That was my thing, was okay. hitting the, like, the press, making sure that all the big like, people are writing about it. Because the thing is with Instagram and stuff like that is that in a couple of years, there'll probably be something new. Mm. Then you'll start at zero. You know what I'm trying to say? Your followers, mm. all that type of stuff starts at zero. So it's like MySpace before this and Facebook before this and t all that type of stuff, you know what I'm trying to say? So I was like, if I could just make sure that every single time I release music, I have the right people writing about it. I have, you know, the newspapers and stuff like that. And also make sure that the music that I make has something unique about it, mm. you know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, I want to create, that. Yeah, to create something that no one has ever heard before. You know, even going into like making music for me was like I I don't want to use any of the like anything that I hear like on popular radio. I don't want to use the same kind of effects. I don't want to use the same kind of drums. I don't want to use the same kind of patterns. I don't want to. I want to come up with something completely like it's a complete mind fuck. Like. Mm. You don't know where this person is from. You don't know what this person is into. Like, it's just something completely new. Yep. You know? I get it. Because if you like everyone else, then why would anyone write about you? That's exactly. Especially coming from the developing world, <laughs> you know? Nice. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> and in terms of your strategy, uh, was that the focus? Because it seems to me like you don't do lots of everything. You, in terms of your brand, you, you go straight at the press. You don't, you're not on Snapchat and TikTok and this. You pick mm. one thing, you nailed it, and then you move on. Yeah, um, that's, that's the, I pick, yeah, exactly. And I that's was like, like a business thing, too. You know? It is, and at the time, I guess at the, like, you know, th yeah, did the press thing, and I guess Instagram is also there, too. I guess, like, maybe from, like, this year or last year, Instagram has become the main thing now, mm. you know, because, uh, as much as, you know, all the music can go to all the press and stuff like that, it doesn't necessarily guarantee translating into album sales yep. or like any form of uh, any sales. Yeah. So, and that's the same with, I guess, Instagram. You can have people with like a million followers, but they can't sell, like you said, 31 t-shirts, mm. you know? So, the, the thing is, it's, you know, it's a unique journey that we all have to appreciate, I feel like. And it's like appreciating in your individual self, mm. or, you know, and once you appreciate your individual self, you'll be able to appreciate everything around you. So, and then I feel like in this culture, what's happening right now is that I always say, I have this phrase that I came up with called, you can't spell culture without cult, right? Okay. Which basically means that we create this culture. We always create these cultures like, oh, uh, I don't know. Well, you put yourself on the spot there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, no, no it's, I'm just for example, I'm trying to think of just something like, oh, okay, cool, today we taking pictures in like the red underwear or something, yeah. you know? So it's like now everyone's taking pictures in red underwear. So now when you come, when you, come with your green underwear, everyone's like, how could you do that? Everyone starts ganging up on you, yeah. creating this like cult, yeah. cult yeah. you know? So, so, I've, so what I've just sort of, I just focus and I, I'm just, I keep my head down and I just go. And I go at my pace and I go at my whatever and mm. release what I want to release, do what I want to do and that's how I, I will continue to create this, you know. That does thing. put you in a very tough position in terms of timing versus pop culture and what's popular. 
Um, it's just, it seems like your career has been very ahead of its time. Um, are you waiting for the world to catch up? Or are you just going to keep plowing until the world recognizes that you are what you think you are? Well, do you know what I mean? You know what I'm asking? I get, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But I, again, I didn't choose this life. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That, <laughs> you didn't choose this life either. You just, you came, you go, started getting the thoughts and you were like, okay, cool, I want to go into this. And I think I disagree with you. I think you did choose. You had a very distinct choice, in fact. When you were a kid and you decided that you're, you were going to leave the church band, the pastor said to you, you stay or you go, and if you go, you never come back. You had a very distinct choice that you made. It didn't happen to you. So, like, you, you, took, you took agency there, and you went and you went after what you wanted. I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it didn't uh, just happen yeah. to you. I mean, it, it, didn't, very... it, okay. it didn't just happen to me, right? But my life of being a musician, that's my life. Uh, it's a calling. It's my, okay, you know what I'm saying? It's my calling. I see, like, I see. Where, yeah. how I get to where I want to get, I don't know, all right? Got it. But in terms of music, like, it's what I breathe. Like, it's just, and it can't be, like, it's not something that I choose. Mm. That's, like, especially, like, in, the, like, you know, it's like, oh, these people are from, like, uh, Sudan or whatever. Or, like, they're from, like, Congo or whatever. So, and we start treating people differently because they're from all these different places when we didn't choose this. You know what I'm trying to say? Yep. No one chose any no, of these that. things. Like, you know, um, uh, yeah, so, you know, I, can't, I can make choices within my journey. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, okay, cool. I'm rather going to, you know, leave the church instead of make church music. Yeah. Either way, making music. <laughs> I'm making music. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I do. So, you know, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, you know, when it comes to, like, you know, who we are, I think, mm. you know, and instead of, like, letting ourselves slowly, like, unravel, we, like, you, you, like, you know, instead of allowing ourselves to unravel, we, like, this is, why am I not this person? Yeah. You know, why am I not like, why aren't you as big as you are in South Africa, as in, in uh, London, as you're not? It's like, who, who are you? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to come, yeah. It's like, wh why are you, it's like, do you, do you know my life? Did you, no, you don't. Mm. So like, you know, chill. So, you know, that's the thing, you know, so. Cool. Yeah. Makes sense. You get what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. So my final question is the question I ask all of my guests. Um, what advice are you happy that you avoided in your life? Uh, I feel like with advice, it's like, uh, I feel like 90% of the advice that I've gotten, I've ignored. OK. And 10% of the good advice that I've gotten, I've used. Okay. You know, so, so ninety percent of the advice I've gotten was bad. Okay. You know, and from. Luckily, you know, I have a partner that helps me make these decisions, mm. I guess, or like helps me disseminate like the advice, I guess, or like whatever. You know, because I'm, especially in the music industry, people are like, yeah, I should definitely do this, should definitely do that. Especially when you, you know, you were talk, you were saying about the. What's that syndrome? Imposter syndrome. Imposter yeah. syndrome. Yeah. Well, when, you, when we spoke yesterday, and you were talking about that, and how like we always feel like we're not good enough, good enough, mm -hmm. or that we're not part of the crew. You know what I'm trying to say? And that's just that's just life, man. Mm -hmm. You know. Like I said, I didn't. <laughs> I am who I am, man. You know. Cool. It's yeah. worth noting, if you don't know what imposter syndrome is, it comes up in every single talk. Um, the definition is, in spite of external validation, you don't feel like you belong where you are. And it's something that everyone feels. Uh, most people, not everyone. But that feeling that when you walk into a meeting, everyone else is smarter than you, everyone else feels that way too. Like if they scratch below the surface, they're going to find out that you're a fraud. Everyone else feels that way too. Um, even musicians. <laughs> 
Um, Yannick, thank you so much right, for giving you. us your time. Um, that is all my questions. We're going to close off the video and then open up to the floor. Thank you, guys.